open now to harvest a few of these uh, flowers for home. And man, these are beautiful. That is beautiful. These are, all of them are beautiful. This is a book I bought a while ago and I just had a quick unboxing of it but uh, now I have studied the book and I have made my mind about it. This is called How to Grow Your Own Nuts. Of course nuts has a naughty meaning that that is not concerned here. We are not talking about those kind of nuts uh, and uh, we are talking about edible nuts that you can find and grow and eat and uh, it's written by Martin Crawford and uh, it's published in Britain by Green Books and the price of it uh, uh, I have to look in my uh, invoice to see how much I paid for it yeah I paid for it uh, £17.49 which is about uh, 21 22 pound American 22 American dollar US dollar Canadian dollar, I don't know how much it will be. Something a little bit more, probably 23, 24, depending on the exchange rate. Okay, uh, 17 and a half pound. Uh, it's a beautiful book. It's a lovely hardback and uh, full color. Beautiful for the price, it's really valuable. And uh, it has many things, including how to plant your trees in a way that they form a wind barrier as a windbreak and uh, it discusses in detail how to protect your trees, how to protect the branches how squirrels or main pests of the nuts, what are they I know that as a fact because I, had a, I have a, a hazelnut tree that uh, sometimes I have to share it with the squirrels and even rats how to do grafting of them how to grow it from seeds, how to collect it, their equipment, all kind of equipment. You don't need practically this kind of equipment, but uh, the thing about the walnuts, for example, this is a equipment for collecting walnuts, is that walnuts' skin can stain your hands. It gets black, kind of brownish black. And it goes after two or three weeks, of course, but it's a very good uh, color. They use it in the in the past, they use it in the tanning of the leather and in using it in textile industry. And uh, they don't come like this. So the, the skin can't fall off after a long time. But usually when you collect it, the skin is attached to it and uh, they can easily stain your hand. You can dry them, of course, if you don't live in a dry place. Uh, that there is no good season of dryness. And uh, yeah, all kind of things. I, I'm from a region ancestrally in, in Caspian Sea region, in Persia, in Persia, in Iran. That these kind of things are native to the almond, for example, walnut. Here, you mentioned here, Asia, Iran, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all these kind of areas that are, that's called in geography, called the plateau of Iran. The, they come from there. So people really grow them. It's very common. A walnut tree uh, can be a good source of income for someone one single walnut tree you can live with it right, practically with the income of walnut tree and it has a good value and uh, you collect it and you make a good money in the autumn almond the same almond is expensive one of the most expensive nuts is actually almond and uh, i have grown with these things around me i mean when we go to our uh, grand granddad and grandma in the past and so these are very well known most of this you will see a lot of mention of uh, the region around the uh, Iranian plateau and the uh, Iran and the uh, uh, Persia and all those places that the uh, nuts grow and uh, after studying uh, I must say this book is really excellent it's also, also not uh, just the traditional nuts pecan nuts these are from Brazil and South America North America, so you learn a lot more than what you need uh, to make even how to make a, a flower. Flower, 
making by the oak and uh, very good book I must say this is the best book I've seen in these subjects there's so many other varieties of nuts that you is mentioned here I didn't know they have so much so many varieties of hazelnut they're all here including believe it or not some uh, pine seeds you can eat and uh, I, after reading the book which is really really a pleasant joyful read i must say i came to the conclusion that these nuts are suitable for me in the uk climate kent uh, cob nut hazelnut practically rob gin almond which is good for here uh, marion and uh, dolion dolion sweet chestnut i love chestnut in the in the caspian sea Sweet chestnut is the best. We have in our town also sweet chestnut somewhere. It's a secret site for, <laughs> I know where it is. And I try every year to go there around September to beat the squirrels and harvesting some of this. And the other variety of the nuts I want is the walnut broadview, which is uh, very good. And in the Friday 6th of the January 2017, which I was studying also, pomegranate province. Hardly sweet. This is the pomegranate that may grow here in Britain. So all in all, I think this is a lovely book. Yeah, I recommend if you want to buy it or if you have a library around you. I've not seen it in libraries, but uh, if there is a library who has it or you can order order it for you, go for it. It's better to have it. It's not very expensive. The equipment for cracking the nuts, of course, is here. And you can use just a hammer and a stone or anything. Sometimes you can even just do it by hand. There is a kind of walnut in Iran called paper, paper thin, and just break it by hand. It's easy. So this is a book about nuts. If you want to grow nuts, and I'm going to do it, uh, hopefully when I have a, I get a bigger space for allotment or short and everything, I may grow this. And there are walnuts and uh, other nuts, chestnuts, sweet chestnut and uh, hazelnut that actually do give you fruit in two, three years. That's a good thing now because of the development in the study of genetics of the plants. We can now have this kind of luxury of the plants, which usually took many years, many decades actually, to come to fruition. Now you can have it in two, three, four, five years to fruition. It's a book that you have to buy probably. It's a joy to read. It's a beautiful book. And uh, it's by Martin Crawford. And you know now what is it. This is the Horticultural Society.